a driving review of the new Porsche Taycan facelift with Thomas Nautogefühl in 4K full screen full length. Let's go, what can we expect from it? And also, I'll tell you why this one as it stands rear right now is the best Taycan to buy. Let's check it out. Here in the front, we can see lamps now, LED standard, optional HD matrix LED. You could also see them right here. And gentian blue is the color for today. Yes, and I had you know, invested a lot of time to be also wearing gentian blue all over the place. <laughs> here, 20 inch wheels with this closed aerodynamic designs. There are new wheel choices available and the overall length is 4 meters 96 or 195 inches. Biggest news on technology side as for the suspension. You have this new Porsche Active Ride that can lean into the corners, go up and down and so on. I'll we'll soon also have a sample for that. Here this one however, is the rear wheel drive model. The only one where you cannot spec it. It would be theoretically possible, it's just like Porsche policy. But it's interesting because the base rear-wheel drive model, which we have here, is the most bought Taycan and that has also reason, not only pricing. Here, by the way, recharging, there is a charging clip on both sides and it's also now electric. This is the additional AC, in this case here for this version on the driver's side. On the other side, you also have the DC port, then 320 kilowatt peak and 18 minutes from 10 to 80% state of charge. That is super impressive. Now the bigger battery is 97 kilowatt hours net, so that's a massive new boost. And there's a small battery, which is now as big as the old big battery, almost now at 82 kilowatt hours. So massive boost in battery size and also then range. With the big battery, this can go almost 500 kilometers or 300 miles now. So we can score some 20 kilowatt hours and 100 kilometers, so some three miles per kilowatt hour when you're going motorway good temperature, cruise control, 100 kilometers an hour, 60 miles an hour. And then of course the values vary a little bit. Here you can see light strip goes all the way through. This one in here, the base version has this blue Porsche lettering here. It's actually very interesting. You can now also get an illuminated logo if you like. And we can directly check out the trunk because this one here has an electric hatch, very clean design overall in the rear with just 90 centimeters or 35 inches, so not too wide. And the length here is actually a little bit better, it's like a meter or 40 inches. And you can see that for the cables, you have two possibilities, well, actually three. One here underneath for normal cable, then you can, for like extra cables and stuff, you can also get this box here, and you can also fold the seats, one third, two third split here. This is like this extra cable box where you then can have, it's interesting too that I open it from here. There we go. <laughs> Turning indicators in the rear. Yeah, nice and visible, really wide, that looks cool definitely. Acceleration figure by the way, here the base model, the rear wheel drive model, profits most from this update. Now at 4.8 seconds, that's 0.6 seconds quicker than before. Turbo S is now also quicker at 2.4 seconds and there's a new Turbo GT. I'll give you like a sneak peek at the end of this video today. This will minimum go 2.2 seconds to one kilometers an hour. Here then, turning in the case in the front or the hazard lights, that looks really cool, right? This four dot structure. And then here with the key fob, I can open the trunk. And Porsche has a tradition of trunks, of course, because of the rear engine concepts and so on. Here we do have one as well then in the EV. Other German manufacturers haven't been using the trunks so much yet. Now here in the Taycan, of course, in the new Macan EV and in the Q6 e-tron because they sit on the same platform. So this would then be the third possibility to put your charging cable. So Leah has already picked her color for today. Yeah, here with the Turbo GT. Doesn't need to be a Turbo GT, but this color definitely, right? <laughs> Whereas for the Panamera, the estate versions are gone now. For the Taycan, they are still available. Either the Sport Turismo that looks the same here in the top or the Cross Turismo that is the Sport Turismo with these crossover wheel arches, also a little bit higher, this crossover estate version. And also available for the Taycan is this new Porsche Active Ride. Comes new with the facelift, not available for the base version, but when you have an all-wheel drive model, then you can get it. And for example here, it has this entry help. There we go. It pumps the car up that you can get easy inside. And when you close the door again, inside or outside, then you see 
the car goes down again. This is possible with this hydraulic system that can individually rule each wheel. On the technology side, it would also be available for the base version, but they didn't put it in the rear-wheel drive version to differentiate a little bit to the others. In the driving part, we'll find out if it's really necessary to go for this new suspension. Let's get inside and here, when I close the vehicle, you can see here, flush door handles, when I open it, they come towards you like this. And door closing sound. It's really good for a vehicle that is frameless in the doors. That's actually cool. And this one also has the optional insulation in insulation package. You can see here this dual layer of glass, really cool for the motorway and so on. Then here, inside of the doors, this is the leather-free interior, also soft touch, so it's a good build quality. Also felt at the inside of the doors, as we should expect it, actually. Then the Racetex steering wheel, microfiber, for me, the favorite, the best, and also the best seats you can get for the Taycan called Pepita or Houndstooth on the middle part here, a fabric and some leatherette on the outside and microfiber share here because this is not only animal friendly, it's also the most comfortable seat you can get because it adapts better to your body and especially like, like the big bones, you know, and, and you know, underneath. <laughs> Uh, this is just way more comfortable when we have the fabric seat here. With 189, 6 for 2, still a lot of headroom left. This is the one without the panoramic roof. You can also get a fixed panoramic roof then with this electrochrome shade that is also possible. So the bones underneath my booty, I just checked it up. I want to know because in Germany we say Sitzbeinhöcker. Listen and repeat. Sitzbeinhöcker. And it's Ischial tuberosity. Ischial tuberosity. So these seats are better for your... Ischial tuberosity. Yeah, that's what I want to say, just to note that. Cockpit overview. <laughs> you have screen, screen, screens. You also have a passenger screen, actually. Um, so from my side, I cannot see it that well. Can you see it, Leah? No. No, she can, because from the sides, you cannot see it. You can only see it when you come around. Then now, maybe a little bit. Mm -hmm. Then is really tough because if not visible from the side, you have to be on this seat, then you can actually see that. If it's really necessary, I don't know. Then you also have soft touch here, all the way in the dashboard, sport chrono package here with analog clock. Temperature is controlled right here with this clicking feedback, but the e-tron GT counterpart to me is a little bit easier because it still has a manual climate unit. You can also open, by the way, um, here, the, the, the front or the trunk and so on. You can control it also from the screen. Adaptive cup holders. The only thing that's yeah, strange is like this middle console, like how it opens here. It's like always in your way. And then it's super tiny here. And then you have to put your smartphone like, like this for the inductive charging. <sighs> I don't know. Mm. So I think it's not really a good smartphone design. Then we have the brown shaver design here with the switch gear like this, P. Yeah, and I really love that steering wheel, especially that you can change the driving modes directly at the steering wheel. And if you wonder, yes, sometimes the steering wheel does block parts of the instruments. However, the middle usually stays free. Interesting, by the way, that you can always deactivate this electric sports sound if you don't fancy that. And here also is interesting as for the chassis, normal Sport Plus, and the air suspension is standard for the Taycan face if you know. So even if you don't have the Porsche Active Ride, you still have the air suspension and you are flexible here. When you have the Active Ride, it would appear here in the comfort setting actually. Sitting in the rear, it's actually quite cozy here with the fabric seats as well. You have this kind of single seat setup. Headroom wise also works, but yeah, to the side here it gets closer. You have to be a little bit forward than to the middle, then it's okay. Also leg room when I'm sitting as a tall driver. In the middle part, there's just this cubby hole and you have this middle console with a separate climate unit here. So with fabric seats, again, it's more comfortable. Considering the length of the vehicle, it's of course not like this, you know, that it would be best for tall people in the rear. This is, however, also adaptive. So it's actually a very good build quality around the vehicle. And even if you look at the inside of the rear doors, there's also a felt covering. All right, let's go to Sport Plus and hit the launch control with the new Taycan facelift. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> so official is now 4.8 seconds, 0.6 seconds quicker than before. So the base version, and this is the rear wheel drive base version of the Taycan, actually profits most from this acceleration surplus. Really, that's the best part. <laughs> yeah, the Liamita goes off, she loves it. Yeah, and that, wow, that already gets your adrenaline adrenaline pumping definitely and it drives so extremely well you know in sport plus the air suspension is set on a stiffer note this one here with the base suspension so not the porsche active ride and it drives phenomenal so do i miss the porsche active ride not at all it just drives amazing and think about this is the most sold taycan model worldwide and wow it accelerates so well out of the corners and I love the rear-wheel drive concept. Of course, you have more performance and more acceleration with an electric motor in the front. But hey, you get a rear-wheel driven Taycan, you get a rear-wheel driven sports car, and this is a sports car. And if you compare it also to the Panamera, this one just has, you know, it hooks up to the ground so well, you sit lower. Definitely is more fun to drive than the Panamera, although the Panamera is already a great drive. This is so much fun. I mean, it's here like left and right, it hooks up so well, you feel you're gluing to the ground. Yes, there is high weight due to the battery pack here with an electric vehicle. In this case, however, it kind of adds to this connected feeling a little bit and you don't feel the weight, you know, at least maybe when you're like pushing in very, very tight corners. But the driving behavior, the sporty one is just exceptional here. and. Once again, this is the base Taycan, and this is more than anything already. Ah, every roundabout is also really nice to drive. Now some motorway driving, ah, beautiful getting on the motorway already. This is really cool. Already when we are at speed, here 75, let's see, let's go. 120, ooh, nice, and not sure if you saw that on the camera, but I could feel the shift, you know, of the two, of the two gears, so the uh, car was also shifting, and it's really yeah, uncommon to feel it with an electric vehicle, but it also somehow adds to this uh, special feeling of the Taycan, definitely. The lane change is so good, actually, and Remember, this one here does not have this new Porsche Active Ride. It has the standard air suspension and, I mean, it doesn't shake up at all either. So, if you ask me, do you need the Porsche Active Ride? Not at all. Absolutely not. I mean, it's a fantastic technology. It's really impressive. But then again, I mean, if you want to buy and hold the vehicle, um, Maybe also a good idea to keep it a little bit more simplified. Most will be leased for now, for sure, definitely. But the thing is also, when it's already that good, when you have the standard setup, why would you go even further, you know? So, uh, yeah, that is really amazing. And also, as for the acceleration, the power, the punch and so on, of course, Turbo S or then like the new Turbo GT is even more extreme. But here, the base Taycan has actually the best upgrade so to speak as i said earlier like with this 0.6 seconds quicker than before so the base taycan actually profited most from this facelift update now at 4.8 seconds and it just feels so great on the motorway even here in the sport plus mode the suspension is comfortable enough 20 inch wheels mounted here if you would like to have even more comfort you would go for a little smaller wheels also it's also possible back to the normal normal mode and the air suspension is also a little bit softer and here at 120 kilometers an hour, like, you know, 70, 75 miles an hour, it's really very silent in here. So we don't have to raise our voices when, when talking to each other and so on. You can set the cruise control, also profit from these modern assistance systems. I even feel it would be more silent than, than in the Panamera. Yeah, maybe next to this uh, speed warning there. Uh, which you can also deactivate on the, in the panel. Remember, we had it here on the uh, favorite button, for example. You can you can program that, and that's only a um, EU thing, definitely. But I'm really surprised of like how comfortable and 
silent it can be. This vehicle is equipped with the optional insulation package. That's very important, definitely, if you want that extra of noise insulation on the motorway at higher speeds. So this definitely helps. And then, I mean, when you're driving like this, there's not much difference to the higher versions here. I like to have the rear-wheel drive only as well, so this is also something. And this will be the most bought Taycan version. And considering what other Porsche prices we have, this one here at 130,000 euros, all equipped with all the extras, is in comparison cheap. <laughs> we, we have to say that in that respect. Here, let's do in the normal mode a quicker lane change and see how that reacts. Let's see about that. Wow, it's just flawless. This driving experience is so flawless and smooth. And once again, the fabric seats also add to the comfort. So they're way softer than the animal skin surface. So the car we're driving right here would be the most comfortable setup for everyday driving. And most Taycans will, of course, not be used on the racetrack, but for everyday driving. And for that, it's actually the cl most clever choice. We've been driving the same motorway with the Porsche Panorama. And of course, you have a little bit more space in there. But then again, the seats are kind of similar. Maybe a little bit different from, you know, like from, from the seating position here. Sit lower, you feel more connected to the road. But I don't feel too much difference in the comfort. And we feel also that this here is a little bit more silent than the Panamera. Passenger comment, how, how does it feel like when I, you know, I, when I move you around? It's nice. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. yeah, because, you know, sometimes when the vehicles are a little bit lower and sportier, especially in comparison to SUVs, it's also better than on the passenger. So this video is more about the base version of the Taycan, but to come is the Taycan Turbo GT, new version, either 2.2 seconds in the acceleration figure, now the new top end model, here either as the normal Turbo GT, then we just have a small wing here in the rear, or as the Turbo GT with the Weissach package, listen and repeat, Weissach, also by the way has the PCCB, the carbon ceramic brakes always, the Turbo GT, but here the Weissach package also removes the rear bench, so there's no rear bench, and you also get this large fixed rear wing, really for racetrack purpose. And I will drive this one for you, so stay subscribed or new subscribe if you haven't done so far. And if you watch this video here at a later stage, maybe it's already online and then we will link it. See you there.